So John, you had a, an absolutely glittering career at Middlesbrough and we're going to be looking back on some of those great moments at your time on Teesside. But first of all, I want to look back and when you joined the club in the first place, just tell us about how the move came about initially. Well, uh, I could have went to Borough sort of a, a couple of years prior to that uh, when I was leaving uh, Bradford City. Bradford had lost out to, to the Borough in the playoffs and, and unbeknown to myself, Borough had come in but had already agreed to, to go to Newcastle United. So I uh, had a season at Newcastle, then I went to Leeds, uh, helped Leeds get promotion. And that summer, I mean, I'd, I'd missed the back end of the season with injury. So that summer, I, I saw it back in uh, Telling Road in a close season, voluntary, when the rest of the guys were on holiday. Uh, so it was fit and ready to go uh, pre-season, it sort of be hitting the ground running. And uh, I came back from Ellen Road one day and there was a note on the kitchen table. But my wife had left a note and it just said, John, please ring Colin Todd, 0191. So I've rang, been I mean, half an hour before I was at Ellen Road, I've rang Colin Todd up and uh, he said, Hi, John, I've agreed a few with Leeds, can you come and talk to me? And I'm thinking, I don't know, no one at Leeds has told me this. And uh, so <laughs> that was that. I mean, no one had the decency to call me or anything else. And I'd, I'd been part of the promotion team. So <sighs> just went up to Colin Todd and I thought, yeah, well, let's, let's go for us. Let's go for us. And, uh, and, and Colin's words to me were, he says, John, you've been at Borough, you've, you've been at Bradford, Borough, Leeds. Come here and settle down. And uh, unfortunately, I did settle down for the next six and a half years. And as you touched on there, that move could have come a little bit earlier had things fallen into place. What was the reasoning behind not joining Borough before you went to Newcastle? Was it just... Because I'd already, I'd already agreed to go to Newcastle United. I'd shook on it and uh, always a man in my word. Once you've shook, shook your hand in something, uh, you stand by that, and I get a call. It was the eve of me signing for Newcastle. I get a call the night before, saying we'd like to talk to you. Uh, it was a, the, the Borough Scout. I says, I'm, I'm sorry, but I shook hands last night, well, or, or tonight, basically. I says, I, I says it'd be wrong of me to go back in my word. And what a way to make your mark at Middlesbrough with that goal against Millwall. I mean, do you, do you still think about that often now? Is it one of the best goals you've ever scored, would you say? Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's well known uh, among the, 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 the Borough fans and what have you. I mean, uh, getting a ball, virtually running from one 18-yard box to, to the far end. And uh, Bernie Slavin said he'd a part to play in it. The only thing Bernie played his part was, was staying onside. Uh, for truth be told, the amount of times he was offside. So once Bernie ran out to the right wing, he was out of the way, then I could go on with my job. And I remember just... I sold a few dummies to a few of their guys and get to the edge of the box and it's on my left hand side and I'm just thinking oh, I've, I've run this far I've got to finish it and I remember just slotting it in just side foot pass into the bottom corner of the net past Brian uh, Horn who later came to Borough and I thought wow what a feeling this is what a fantastic feeling and it was uh, and it's remembered to this day amongst a lot of the, the Borough fans uh, it was yeah memorable in fact I had another one against Norwich a few weeks later, where I just cut him from the right wing for about 30 yards out and just floated one into, well, floated it, curled into the top corner. So within the space of a few weeks, I'd probably two of my best goals of all time. And just before that goal against Millwall, what was your initial kind of thoughts when you first made the move to Teesside? Well, I felt that like, uh, a good bunch of guys. Uh, I liked Colin Todd. Ian Baird had told me about the football club. I'd been at Leeds him prior to it as such. And uh, obviously... Robbie Musto had come in, John Work had come in at the same time as myself. And we thought, right, we'll just go there and see what it takes us. But uh, certainly, I had a lot of time for Colin. And you switched from playing on the flank to a more central role, and you formed a really good partnership with Paul Wilkinson. Yeah. So, I mean, how was that for you, you know, that, that partnership that you had with Paul? Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it was like, I mean, under Colin Todd, uh, I remember he would play me out, out wide all the time, but I'd ma ma made my name uh, as, sort of, as free running. I could play wide, I could play central, but Colin, he just wanted to play me out wide and nowhere else. And uh, I remember that first season, I mean, we, played, we lost to Notts County in the playoffs. And afterwards, I was just frustrated because I felt that he should have played me through the middle in that game against the playoffs because I was playing against uh, the Short brothers. Uh, Craig Short was a centre-half who all... I always had the beating of, and uh, for me, I mean, that was probably the, the one thing that, that, that Colin got wrong that, on that occasion there. Uh, so it was when Lenny came in, he, he sort of uh, threw me down the middle, and, and my, borough, my borough career took off from there. Uh, 
playing alongside Wilco. I mean, he was a sort of so-called big bat on Ram as such. I mean, he was, he was the one who got win the ball, win the flick-ons, and I would just, he would get the smacks, the elbows and what have you. I would get all the glory, and uh, we laugh about it to this day. And obviously you were part of the team who were in promotion to the inaugural Premier League. I mean, just talk us through that season and what it was like you know, to be a part of that and to, to get promoted to the Premier League. Obviously, Lenny Lawrence, he was the man in charge. I mean, uh, and we would, in a way, it was like 4 3 3, come 4 5 1. I'll be in one wing, Stuart Ripley would be in another wing. Then we had Paul Wilkinson uh, as well there. And away from home, it became like 4 5 1. Uh, very much, which a lot of teams use nowadays as such. And uh, memorable season, really memorable season, a great promotion season. Uh, in fact, I mean, we lost out in the, uh, in the semi finals of the Rumble Lost Cup as well against Man United. We, we, we drew 0-0 at, uh, at Ayrson Park, went back to Old Trafford and uh, drawn 1-0. In those, in those days, the way goals didn't count, which did in later times. So uh, that was the closest I got to Wembley as such, and we ended up losing 2-1 in extra time. Uh, I think it was Ryan Giggs that scored after I had one kicked off the line by the one and only Gary Pallister. But uh, it, was, it was a cracking season, and uh, as I said, semi-finals of the League Cup, getting promotion uh, on the last day of the season at Wolves when Nicky Moan gets sent off. Uh, we, we, at times we were up against it, but we, we had good characters in the team. And obviously getting a place in the Premier League, mm -hmm. you then created history with the club by scoring the first hat-trick in the Premier League for the club. It must have been pretty, uh, a good achievement for yourself before obviously what came later on. Yeah, that's right. I mean, at the time you, you, you didn't think that the significance of getting in the Premier League, never mind scoring a hat-trick in the Premier League as such. Uh, and it was only when you look back at all these all these years on uh, as such, and it was only in recent times that someone reminded me, said, John, you scored the first ever ever goal in the Premier League. And it's something which is which I'm honoured, I'm privileged. Uh, I think it was only the third one ever. I think Canton, I get the first one. Uh, Mark Robbins get the second one. So for me, not only the first Borough player, but the first Scotsman as well. Was it's, it's quite unique. And obviously, we got relegated from the Premier League in that season. What was the season like for yourself personally? Can I just say, I mean, that particular game, it was a hat trick, was against my boyhood hero as well. My boy, Kenny Dalglish, because I supported Celtic as a wee boy growing up. And to win the game, 3-2, uh, get all three points. They've got Shearer and the likes of those guys, Wilcox in the team. Uh, it, it, it was... That's what made it all the more special. If we hadn't got all three points, then it would have meant nothing. Yeah. And just like I said, touching on there, the Premier League season itself, we did get relegated, but what was it like playing in the Premier League? A quite exciting time, was it, for the for English football? Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it was terrific. It was obviously, all of a sudden, I mean, football has changed because the, the profile of the game, I mean, everything, everything was under a microscope. And days gone by, I mean, you could elbow people or kick people off the ball, but now there were so many cameras uh, focused on that piece of grass out there on the pitch, and, uh, and, and everyone wanted a bit more of you, uh, rather than sort of go away and forget about things. And obviously, bouncing back, getting back into the Premier League, last season at Ayrson Park, it was quite a big season for you personally, wasn't it? You, know, you finished as top goal scorer, and of course scoring the last goal. Park. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> uh, basically, you've got... Uh, that final season of Lenny Lawrence's reign, it, it became a wee bit flat. I mean, I, I missed quite a few games. I had uh, quite a nasty ankle injury. And come the end of the season, I think it was only about, about maybe less than 10,000 at Ayrson Park. And we all, we all thought, we need, we need something special here. We need some, something massive as such. And the chairman pulled a massive stroke. The chairman pulled, and I remember him telling us we had a barbecue at the end of the season. And he said, John, he says, the manager here will be something else. And sure enough, he lived up to the, the promise and that's when he brought in Brian Robson, which was for me was just a, as I say, a massive stroke. Just talk us through that season as well as a whole. I mean, like mm -hmm. you said, Brian Robson coming in, must have felt like a, a good lift for the team to have someone like that playing. <coughs> yeah, uh, even me as a, a senior pro, I think I was maybe uh, thir 33, was I 33 at the time. Uh, no, sorry, 30 years, 30, not that old, uh, 30 at the time. And when Brian got the job, he called me up. Uh, he said, John, I want to have a meeting with you, whether it be with you being one of the senior players. And 
which was great for me. He was showing, he was taking my word for it, and, and he said, well, what do we need at this football club as such? What do you think we need to get us up to that next level in my first season here? Bear in mind, he, he's a, it's his first stint as manager as well, so he needs help from his senior players. And, uh, and just even Brian being in the building gave me a lift, just his presence of who he had been, England captain, of what he'd achieved at Man United. And it was, certainly it, it, was, it was brilliant to play alongside him. Even if he didn't play, but just being in the same sort of dressing room as him, it, it gave everyone a lift as such. Hence, his first season was a, was a fantastic success in us gaining promotion. Uh, and yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, he let us play with a bit of freedom. He let us play with, play with smiles on my face. And, and he treated us, treated us lot as adults as well. Plenty of lifts he gave Borough squad. Plenty of goals for you as well that season. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, started the season in fire. Uh, I mean, I mean, certainly the first half of the season was excellent for myself, uh, and it was just like I'm thinking, well, I'm enjoying my football here, and when you enjoy your football, you perform, you score goals as such, and, and certainly that was the case. And obviously, getting to the the business end of the season, that game against Luton mm -hmm. to win promotion. I mean, just what was it? You know, not to win promotion then, but to to sign off at Ayrson Park as the last game. I mean, just talk us through. The emotions even going into that game, the fact that it was going to be the last one before the club moves on. Just what was it like for yourself going into that game and the team? Well, uh, any professional footballer will tell you, it's like the pressure's on you. And the supporters can't do it, the, the coach can't do it. It's the, the 11 players out there on the pitch. It's a squad of players, even if the subs when they come on. So you have got to just put everything aside. You have got to prepare yourself menta mentally, physically, just prepare for that job in hand come this Saturday afternoon. We've all got families as such. Hey, you, even my family, that, wait, two or three days before, you're thinking, you're, okay, you've just got to be just so focused there, no disruptions whatsoever. Even when you turn up match day, you've got to think, okay, it was like a circus that day. I mean, it was all the old players were back in town, end of an era, with the opera singers there. It's a sea of red and white. It was like, like who's who of Borough were there? And the supporters, it was all Borough fans, with hardly any Luton fans. So, the pressure's on you. And you know as well as I do, it's like football's always got a habit of kicking your teeth. So we had to just go out there and say, right, OK, come on, guys, this is our job. Let's get it done. And uh, certainly, what a, what a massive relief uh, just to get the three points on that day. And uh, we had to get them by hook or by crook. We had to get those three points. And fortunately, we did do. And, you know, creating history you had done before in the Premier League mm -hmm. with Middlesbrough creating history again on that day by scoring the last ever goal at Ayrson Park. Where does that kind of rank in your career? Just look around, you'll see pictures of the last goal at Ayrson Park all around John Henry's house as such. And uh, special, it is special as such. Uh, to, but once again, it was special in the respect that we won the game. We didn't let anyone down and those three points were instrumental in the borough getting promotion uh, into the Premier League under Brian Robson in his first season. To score a goal, the winning goal, at the time, you don't think, oh, that's the last goal at Ayrson Park. You just think, we've got three points here. We, we, that's, that's got to get us promotion. So it was uh, monumental and a, and a great feeling. It must have been a great feeling to look back on that when you do realise that was the last goal at Ayrson Park. Even though you said at the time you didn't feel like it was going to be, mm -hmm. but to look back on that and think, yeah, I did score the last goal at Ayrson Park, must be quite an achievement and quite a landmark in your career to do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's like, I mean, over the years, they've, 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 they've brought out books, uh, in particular, Ayrson Park Memories. Uh, and I wrote the, I mean, the foreword uh, to that. Uh, and it's like, and, and the, the sales of that book have been magnificent in half. And it was uh, John Wilson and Eric Paylor that wrote that. And they reproduce them every week as such, because it just shows you over... Over the years, the Borough fans, they appreciated of what, you know, it's part of the history. So to know the history of the football club, that was, and you're part of it, that's what makes it special. You mentioned the photographs around the household of mm -hmm. the, uh, the goal you scored. I mean, you've actually got two of them, two of them there that yeah. take pride of place on your walls as well. So, I mean, it just shows you, goes to show how much it actually means to you, the fact that, you know, you've, you've done that in your career that, and you've got these two fantastic pictures that you've got. Yeah, absolutely. It's monumental and, and of course, the old boot. <laughs> the old boots, look at the size of that, eh? <laughs> twinkle toes, 
And I mean, I, I just got that replaced after 24 years. It disappeared for 24 years. And this is the actual boot that scored the last one at, at uh, Ayrson Park. The other one, uh, because they were taking off, off myself on the shoulders after the Tranmere game, the week after at uh, the game at Ayrson Park, the other ones in the director's guest lounge and display cabinet. So to get this back and, and it's, it's played a place, it's something which my kid says, Dad, that you're watching after that, and that ain't going anywhere now. It's staying in the Henry household now. So it's yeah, that is special, alongside the photos of the of, of my time uh, at the borough. Obviously, you're mentioning the boot there. Obviously, quite a, an interesting story. How it was they were they were taken from you at Tramway, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And was it quite strange that you know that you actually got the boot back? I mean, just tell us how you actually got them back then in the end. Well. well as I said, like I'd been going into the, 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 the borough and, and in the director's guest lounge the display cabinet of the history of the borough, I'm having just said John Henry's boot from my last goal at Irson Park, uh, last goal scorer and what have you. And I always said, well, that's a left boot. Uh, and, and people ask me, where's the right one? And I went, no idea. I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue. It was robbed off me at Tranmere. I was in sho fans' shoulders. Uh, Two lads, one to a left boot, one to a right boot. So it disappeared. The lad that got the left boot presented it to a football club. The lad that got the right boot disappeared with it until last year. And it's one of Archie Stevens' close friends uh, from Stokesley. Uh, and Archie said, he says, oh, my mate Jagger's got your boot, John. And I said, what boot? He says, oh, the one at some Park. And I, and I thought, shut up, you're joking. And he actually came to the game and says, oh, yeah, I've got your boot, John. It's just like, as if it was nothing. So he came several times and in, uh, in Ben, this particular game in Ben, he was sat with us as well. And Ben says, how did you get your boot then, John? Did you give it to him or did you throw it into the stand? I says, no, no, it was robbed. So Benny, Benny Slavin actually shamed him into giving him a boot back. So cheers, Jagger. <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah. Well, I never went to the ball, that's the only thing. Does <laughs> it take, take like, pride of place now? alongside those pictures that you've got in the, in the house. Yeah, I mean, I'll need to get a, a little case made for it as such. Uh, because, yeah, that, is, that means something special. Because over the years, I've given away a lot of my own personal memorabilia to, to different charities as such. Uh, and and my kid said to me, says, Dad, keep that, because that is, that is something special to you. Something special from that season, as we mentioned some great things from yourself that season. Mm -hmm. Was that the best season at the club for you, you felt, or even yeah. prior to your career? Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd, I don't know. I mean, it was, it was six and a half years were certainly memorable. Uh, I, I mean, I think the, the first year of the Premier League, I mean, I think I, I won Player of the Year that year uh, in the Premier League. So that was, it was just a shame that we, we, we get relegated that year. But on a personal note, I mean, I, I, I had a fairly successful season. Uh, in the Premier League, the, 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 the inaugural one. But uh, no, I, I look back just with, with, with fond memories uh, because it's not just, I, I look at things in life, it's about people and what have you. And and even now, I, 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 I work in match day hospitality at the borough. Uh, and, and it's just seeing people, I, I'm a people's person, just seeing people uh, on them and, and, and reliving their, their, their special occasions, their special memories means a lot to me and, and over those six and a half years and even now beyond now meeting, meeting new friends behind the scenes at the, at the club supporters who are seeing match days I've made a lot of friends over the years and, and I'm fortunate to have to, been, to have done that You mentioned obviously that season and the great six years that you had at the club you mentioned also the previous managers who had the biggest impact on your time at Millsborough Well if you think I mean under I mean I've played under under three uh, Lennart uh, Colin Todd, Lenny once and Brian Robson. Uh, in a way, you could say Lenny for for having the sort of uh, say, the knowledge to throw me in the middle round, just see me pigeonhole as a wide wide player. So Lenny was very good in that respect. Uh, but, but Brian Robson was about thirty years at the time when, when Brian came into the club, and that just gave me gave me that extra extra wee lift uh, rather. Than, Rather than me get stale, it gave me a spark to get, to get back into gear, and that, that was a memorable season as well. So, I mean, I enjoyed playing under. I didn't have an argument with any of my three managers at Borough. I enjoyed playing uh, under all of them, and, uh, and I think that was why I was 
Well, it was quite well received at Borough because they could see that I was happy. And when I was happy, I gave them a lot. Also, the club back in the Premier League, mm-hmm. in a new home as well, you were part of that. What was it like heading into that season, going into a new home at the Riverside? Yeah, it was great. I think it was time to go, uh, for truth be told. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, if you look at the way football is nowadays, it's going on to a different level as such. And uh, if you look at, not, not just with the stadiums, but the tra- training grounds as well. And if, if, if the Borough hadn't had done it that that time, they'd have been left behind. And it was a, and the club had the, the foresight to recognise that situation and go ahead with the training ground and, and the Riverside as well. And if you look at it, it's a Premier League facility. It's a great facility and something which, which all the Borough fans can be proud of. And a great way for the ground to be christened with that win against Chelsea as well in the... Uh... Yeah, that's right. I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, obviously Craig Hignett, a good buddy of mine, uh, wee Higgy, wee Ginger. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's. Uh, it was just for him. I was. I was pleased for him right, because, uh, I mean, we 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 good team spirit. We could. The thing about us is, we could laugh at ourselves. It's like you know, you've got to have banter in the dressing room. And that's what I, I could laugh at myself. I mean. You live by the sword, die, die by the sword. You get Mickey taking out of you, you take Mickey out your teammates. And that's what a dress room is all about. All the togetherness, the fun and everything else. And it was like that even with, with, with the wee Brazilian when he eventually came in, Janinho came in. And, and he was like that. He, he, had, he, had, he just endeared himself to, to the players because he looked one of the boys. And, uh, and certainly that's what it was like. When Brian brought your big hitters in, your Brancos, your Emersons, your Janinhos, your Ravinellis, uh, Mostly, mostly all good lads, apart from having any. <laughs> <laughs> so, so those players came into the club and that kind of brought the end of your time mm-hmm. at Middlesbrough. I mean, just what was it, how did it come about that you, know, you left the club and went on to join Barnsley? Yeah, well, what it was, I mean, obviously Brian had, t- had taken the club on to a different level. And I, well, I was, what, nearly just short of my 33rd birthday. And uh, in that first few months of the season, I'd, I'd been sat on the bench. I'd, I'd been a squad player. If, if I, so, predominantly in the bench and what have you. Uh, but we'd brought big hitters in. We've got Barnby in there, we've got Ravinelli, the likes of those guys in there. I was nearly touching 33, and it's like, did I hand a transfer request in? No, no, I did not. It was just like, I was just privileged to see the club going on to a different level. We were going to a different tier. And, you, and you're thinking, oh, okay, yeah, I'm enjoying this and, and witness, witnessing the dawn of a new era as such. And uh, or, or I was hoping. And, and it was just in the October time, uh, as I say, I'd been on the bench and Brian just came to me and says, John, he says, Barnes have come in for you. They were in the championship at the time. They have come in for you. Uh, and he says, we've agreed a fee. So... My contract was up the following summer, up the following summer, and now I mean, I'm at this point, I mean, I've got four kids as such. So did I want to wait to the following summer and think, okay, we sat on the bench all season, then wait to the summer and think, okay, I might end up in the, down the south coast or may not get a northern club. I mean, my family was settled in, in the north of England. So I thought, well, and... And the opportunity to play where I wasn't playing in the first few, few months. So uh, we had it all up and I thought, right, OK, it's time. It's time to move on. And, uh, and I must say it was, it was without... Uh, there was a few tears when I left uh, the, the Riverside for uh, the last time. And I remember Robbie Musto was leaving the dressing room and Robbie Musto's words were, he says, we shouldn't be letting John go. We shouldn't. He, he could still have a part to play. And uh, one door closes, another one opens. Come the end of the season... I get player of the year at Barnsley and help Barnsley get into the, the top flight for the only time in their history. And that's only t- 130 odd years that they've had one season in the top flight. And I'm proud to have achieved what I did there as well. And the ironic thing was, I've left the, sort of, uh, the, the Ferraris and the Maseratis of the Riverside to the Fiat Pandas and Unos of, of Barnsley. Barnsley went up and Borough came down. And it was, that was maybe if I'd have said they wouldn't have come down. You mentioned a few tears about when you left Middlesbrough for the last time, walking away from the Riverside. Was it the toughest club to leave during your time? Obviously, you had quite a lot of... Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd been very, very happy there. Very, very happy. And it's like, uh, as I say, six and a half years. Uh, very happy. I mean, it was like... It was, I mean, I must admit, when it, after I was at Bradford as well. I, I came through the Bradford fire in my younger years. 
uh, when I was the, the worst day in my life and what have you, and well, it was just when I had to leave Bradford as well. I had to leave because for top flight football, no other reason. But I mean, what, what I'd been through at Bradford and a lot together, not just with my teammates, but by by the the whole city of Bradford after it was a tragedy and it's like even to this day it's like every every eleventh of May I'm doing it in Bradford just uh, in memory of the, the ones that lost their lives there and it was but that was that was a tough time for me. It was tough to leave Bradford then as well. And just on Barnsley yourself, I mean you rekindled that, that partnership with Paul Wilkinson as well, didn't you? So it must have been good to to go back and, and play alongside him. Yeah, it, it was brilliant in a time and when Wilco did ring me uh, he called and says, John, he said, we've got a great chance of going up here. I think they were sat, I might have been sixth in, in the championship or something. And he said, he says, but the good thing about it is we play some terrific football. It's not as if we, we, we're punting the ball. He says, and you've come here, good set of lads. And uh, certainly I went in there and uh, it was it, it was a great achievement. And, and we struck it. We struck it lucky. And not lucky, we, we worked hard. Uh, and Wilco and, and myself, I mean, we... We were a big part of Barnsley's promotion, and the combination had worked at the Borough. It had also worked at Barnsley, uh, and, and we, we were known as a as a reliable combination. In fact, I'll tell you a story. It was at a time because we had been successful. Uh, I remember Football Focus coming to do a feature on the two of us at Barnsley, as Barnsley were, were, were going for promotion, and they, and they turned round. Football Focus interviewed us and said, "Guys, they said." Uh, just tell us what's what's the combination. Why does it work so well? And I went. I said, well, I says he's a big lad. He he wins the flick ons. He'll get the knocks. Never anything else. Uh, uh, I'll just run fast and, and I'll just run through and score a goal and take the glory. And Wilco went. Yeah, he always knows my balls are gonna go. Well, I've lost it. I have lost it on screen. I've lost it on screen as such. Right? It didn't show that on a Saturday afternoon on Football Focus. But years later, that was on. It was all right on a night football gaffs uh, program, and it was on five times. And every time it was on, I get turned on fifty quid for it. <laughs> gospel truth, gospel truth. Wilco never got a bean, never got a penny. And and, and he used to say to Wilco, he says, Wilco, what be them royalties for a f football uh, all right on a night? He says, Yeah, good and good and good and. To this day, he thinks I'm telling a wee white lie. I'm not, Wilco. I did. I got twelve hundred and fifty quid for it, pal. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just look, like I say, looking back on your career, not just with Middlesbrough, but so many great memories and so many great achievements. What is the number one defining oh. achievement in your career when you look back? That's, I, I mean, that's really hard. That is a uh, uh, that is a really really tough question. It's like I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I was fortunate enough to be. Player of the Year at, at, at Borough, Bradford, Barnsley, Fans Player of the Year, which which means everything to you. Top scorer at, at Bradford and, and Borough. Uh, promotions, I mean, I, I think I've had about four promotions, five promotions in total, four of them into top flight, two with Borough, one with Leeds, one with Barnsley. So it's I couldn't I couldn't say it was going to last goal at some part or the first ever hat trick in the Premier League for the Borough and what have you. Honestly, I've got so many, many special memories. And as I say, I, I'm blessed because I'm just a wee boy from Lennox Town in Scotland. It's, it's lived a dream.